Pay attention. App locker. We're going to prevent Windows Media Player from running. Are we together? So, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to create an app locker rule. And secondly, I'm going to enforce that rule to run on the computer system. Are we together? So, in order for us to create the app locker rule, we are actually logged in as administrator. My administrator is Peter, right? So, I'm going to go to my desktop now. Now, the first thing I'm going to open is my local group policy settings. Are we together? So, what I'm going to do is simple. Um, you can use your search icon, doesn't matter. Click on search, click uh, local. <coughs> local group. Okay, if it's not coming up, let's run it instead. Let's run, let's use the run command. Type run, click on run. And type GP edits. Type GP edits. Yeah, GP edit.msc. Then press OK. It will bring up the local group policy editor. GP edits. It will bring the local group policy editor. Okay, I'm going to expand my screen. Listen, it's either you listen to me or you listen to your friend. I'm not going to tell anybody to keep quiet. You can talk as I'm talking. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go to computer configuration. Now, the policy we're going to be creating will be under computer configuration. We'll expand Windows settings. <laughs> then after expanding Windows settings, we'll expand security settings. Then you notice there, on after security settings, did you see application control policy? Okay. Can you expand it? Now, the moment you expand it, you notice there's a policy there that says app locker. Is that not correct? Yes, okay. Double click on it. Now, when you double click on it, it gives you a view of what app locker is all about. Now, like I told you guys in the class lectures, I, I did mention that um, one of the new policies Microsoft added on Windows 8 was package app rules. You know what package app rules means, right? A company who is actually having its own apps. Are you getting me? Yeah. They can create a rule based on that as well so that certain users do not have access to those rules. Now, what I'm going to do now, the first thing is to do is to create an executable rule, meaning I have to run the rule, the default rules. And what are the default rules? Everybody, everybody's allowed to run all programs in the program file. Is that not correct? So those are things we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do now, before I continue, Alan is a user in my computer. Is that not correct? But in this lab, we're asked to deny the IT group access to run Windows Media what? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to my computer management. I'm going to go to users and uh, local users and groups. I'm going to go to group, right click, new group. I'm going to type IT. And who are the members? I'll click add and I'll type Alan. I'll click check names. Alan is there. I'm going to click on create. So that's the IT group. Alan is part of that group. Okay, I'm done with that. The next step is to go to the to create an executable rule. So I'm going to click on executable. I'm going to write now. By default, you will notice there's no rule there. Is that not correct? Now, before you can create an app locker rule, the default rule has to be set up first, which allows all administrators to have access to the program. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say, create a new rule. But see what's going to happen. When I click on that, you'll notice that the wizard for the create a new rule comes up. Are we together? Are we together? Now, by the time I finish with this rule, the default rule will automatically be generated. But what I can do, I can cancel this. I can right click and I can say automatically generate what? Rules. Are we together? But I just want to do 
all of them at once. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the top, and I'm going to create a default rule, a, a new rule, sorry. I'm going to click on Next. And what is this rule? Is this rule allow or deny? So I'm going to select deny according to our lab. And who are the groups? I'll click select IT. I'll click check names. And that is intact. I'll click OK. And I'll click on next. And now the question is, what type of rule is this? Is this rule going to be a published rule? A publisher rule is a rule that has to do with the software publisher, Samsung, HP. The second one said path. Is there, is, is there a specific path that is residing in the computer that you want to prevent people from running? The last one says file hash rule. Now, is see a particular rule that applies to an application which is not signed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take path. Is that not correct? Because the application, which is Windows Media Player, is installed in my computer system. Is that not correct? So that's what I'm going to take. I'm going to take path. And I'm going to click on next. And I'm going to click on browse path. Um, Browse file, that's Windows Media Player there. Then that's wmplayer.exe. Then I'm going to click on open. And that is the location of the file there. Huh? So I'm going to click on next. You can actually create an exception. Are you getting me? Like, for example, the path, I can create an exception for the path, but I'm not doing any exception. So I'll just click next. And on this place, I'm going to write description. Company Media Policy Rule Section 234. Company Media Rule Sections Rule Section 234. That's of course, the only way you put it that note there, just in case another administrator comes in. So I'm going to click Create. Remember, we're creating one rule, right? Well, let's see what's going to happen. Now, something comes up. It says, the default rule are currently not in the rule list for this rule collection. So when creating a rule, it is recommended that you should also create the default rules to ensure that important system files are allowed to what? Are we together? Because this app controls everything. It has to do with application. So I'm going to click yes. And you notice all oh, the path is set up. Everyone can run all Windows files, Windows folders, all, uh, all files, but deny IT group to run this specific what? Program. OK, let's go and enforce the rule. So now let's go to the app locker property. You see the app locker here? Can you see the app locker here? Can you right click on it? and go to property. Now on property, did you see enforcement, the tab, enforcement? OK, we'll say configured. We'll select it to configure enforcement for executable rule, which is, of course, the rule we are doing now. And um, that's, that's the rule we, do, we need to configure according to the lab. Then we click apply, and we click on what? OK. Now let's do one more thing. We need to what? Update the group policy. Is that not correct? Remember I told you that group policy can be updated either when you restart the computer or you can force it. So let's go to the Start menu. We'll select on Search and we'll type GP, uh, sorry, we can type as PowerShell. Run as administrator. Then we type GP. Updates space forward slash force. Are we together? Now press enter. Now what the system will do, it will update the user policy and it will also update what? The computer what? Policy. Are we together? Automatically. That's what has happened. It has updated the two policy. I'm following the manual. So what I'm going to do now, before I move to Allah, there's one secret ingredient that some people did not get right every time they make this rule, is to start what they call the ad application identity service. Some people didn't know that. So you want to make sure you stick to that. So I'm going to come to the tab here, 
or I'm going to click on my start. I'm going to click on search, and I'm going to type service. So it's going to come up with my view local service. So I'm going to click on it. Now, did you see application identity? Did you see it's it's only manual? It's not started, right? It's only manually triggered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on start what? Service. It's now running. So I'm fine. So let's go to Alan and test the policy. That's exercise two. So we're going to log in and we're going to test the policy of, uh, of the user. So I'm going to click start and I'm going to come to the user and I'm going to see Alan. Okay. Okay, for best practice, what I'm going to do, I'm going to log Alan out. Are you getting me? I'm going to sign out so that I can sign in again so that the policy can affect, uh, can be refreshed. So I'm going to sign him out. And I'm going to re-log him back into the system. Alan Smith. So this is a fresh startup. So the computer will load every other policies that have been applied. Okay? Now let's go to Windows Media Player. Right? Let's see if Alan can run Windows Media Player. <laughs> we can go to the search icon and type uh, Windows Media. Is that Windows Media Player there? Can you click on it? Okay. It's coming up. Let me go to the application, program files, Windows Media Player. Yeah. You said? No, it's done now. Yeah, that's it. No, normally you're supposed from the execution. Execution, it's supposed to give you that problem. Yeah. No, no, no. I think the policy is still applying in my computer. That was the delay. The policy was still applying. Yeah. So now if I go and do that now again on the Windows, because the computer just boot up. I'm just trying to... You see now? It says your what? Your system administrator has blocked what? Contact your system administrator. Guys, that is app policy. If you check your event viewer now, you'll be able to see the system log, event, event ID 1502. So let's go and confirm that. Then we are done. Can we go to um, your administrator? Working as your administrator, then confirm. Confirm that which we just said now. We go to events viewer. Events view event log. So we go to the system log. We go to system log. So we're looking for the ID 15. That's it there. It says 1502. Is that not correct? Huh? It says the group policy was processed. This was processed. Detected it was applied. And all of that. You can see the policy application was executed successfully. And of course, the logon notification for improvement programs. So the next one is to now let's go to let's go to applications and services. Then we go to Windows on Microsoft. We go to Windows. Then we look for App Locker. We expand it, and uh, we we'll look for the XE and DDL. 
Then let's look for the code number 804. And that is it there. It says Windows Media Player was what? Prevented from running. Is that not correct? And who was the user trying to use it? Alan. Guys, that's all I wanted to show you. At least I can stop here 